In this video, I will explain the types of discontinuity a function may have and how some of them can be removed. How may a function fail to be continuous? Let's remember the definition. We say that a function f is continuous at a point a when the limit at a is the same as the value f of a. Otherwise, we say the function is discontinuous. It is traditional to classify discontinuities as removable and non-removable. We have a removable discontinuity when the limit exists, but the limit is not equal to the value of the function f of a. And we have a non-removable discontinuity when the limit of the function does not exist. I will explain why this classification is useful and the reason for the name. Here is an example of a removable discontinuity. The limit as x approaches a exists, but is not equal to f of a. In this case, the graph has a hole. It does not matter whether the function is undefined at a or it is defined but with a different value. In both cases, the graph has a hole and both cases count as a removable discontinuity. Why is it called removable? Because it can be fixed. I will explain with an example. Consider the function h defined by the equation h of x equals sine of x over x. As x approaches 0, this function has limit 1 but h of 0 is undefined. This is what the graph looks like. If this is the first time you are encountering this function, you may be surprised. It is not obvious that this limit is 1. For now, yes, accept that this is the case from the graph. I will prove it in another video. So the graph has a hole and the function has a discontinuity. But I can remove it by filling the hole. What does this mean? I'm going to define a new function called big H. Big H is exactly the same as the original function when x is not 0. But in addition, I am going to define big H of 0 to be 1. And when I do this, big H becomes continuous at 0. Think about the graph. This is the graph of the original function, a small h, with a hole at 0. The new function big H is exactly the same, except it is also defined to be 1 at 0. So the new function fills the hole, so to speak, and this is the graph. I am exaggerating a bit how I fill the hole to make it clear. I could probably simply draw the graph like this. What I did here, removing the discontinuity, is something we can always do as long as the limit exists. And that is why we call it a removable discontinuity. In a way, it is as though we had a continuous function, but we forgot to define it at the point or we define it with the wrong value. In science, and more particularly in physics, it is common to remove discontinuities automatically whenever possible. Physicists normally don't make any distinction between a function with a removable discontinuity and the same function with the discontinuity removed. For example, if a physicist talks about sine of x over x, they probably are thinking about big H, about the fixed function. By contrast, let's look at some examples of non-removable discontinuities. This function does not have a limit at zero because it has a jump. It is a non-removable discontinuity Try as we may, we cannot fix this function. We cannot make it continuous by redefining it at zero. This other function does not have a limit at one because it has a vertical asymptote at one. It cannot be fixed either. It cannot be made continuous by defining it at one. It also has a non-removable discontinuity. And this final example does not have a limit at zero either. It also has a non-removable discontinuity. There is no way to fix it. In short, Removable discontinuities can be, well, removed. Non-removable discontinuities cannot. That is the reason for the name. 